144 golfers would start a 2022 St Andrews Lynx Trophy, but only those inside the top 40 after two rounds on the Jubilee course would have the privilege of a further 36 holes on the now Open Championship ready old course. Chilly and breezy conditions greeted the golfers on Friday for round one on an immaculate Jubilee layout. Those who had travelled from Australia, South Africa, Argentina and even Singapore would perhaps feel the North Sea chill more than most. Coming from a little nearer than that, Ochterarder to be precise, Rory Franson was back after missing out last year's sudden death playoff by a shot, and he gave us his thoughts on the strength of field for the tournament this year. And it's so strong, I think every year, I mean this year especially you see guys from Australia, South Africa, everywhere, so it's going to be yeah, really stiff competition. Amazing for me, you know, growing up not too far away and then, um, yeah, just coming here and dreaming of playing the old course and hopefully get to play it on Sunday would be would be very cool. There are chances out there um, and obviously, yeah, to do that you got to keep it in play, so, you know, finding the fairways will be key for me, I think, this week. A nice start from Rory with a birdie here on the second. Nicely done. He would finish round one at one under par. With the sun breaking through, there were some very good scores coming in throughout the day. What about this for an approach shot on the par 5 11th from South African Jonathan Broomhead? Eagle putt secured, he was on his way to a 4 under total of 68 and a tie for 8th at the end of the day. Malcor Hugo from France was also going well. This was a par here at the last. And that saw him tied for third at five under. Out behind Malcor was Charlie Crockett from Addington Palace Golf Club in England. He showed some fine iron shots throughout the day. Another one here at the last, and that birdie putt would drop. He would also finish at five under par. Going one better was fellow Englishman Will Hopkins. His six under 66 could have been one better if this birdie attempt on 16 had just rolled half an inch further. But leader after 18 holes was Scots born Australian Connor McKinney. Eagle putt just rolling up short on 11 but this birdie was one of nine that he carded on a simply stunning 8 under 64. I've been hitting the ball good, so there's a lot of confidence. My strategy was, was good, so it was just a case of committing, which I've done pretty well. The weather was bright and sunny from the start of day two, but still not quite t-shirt weather for most, with that wind blowing in from the North Sea. The Jubilee looking in fine condition, though. First round leader, Conor McKinney, was on the defensive, scrambling well here at the par 3 fifth to save his par. Nicely done. We find him again out here at the par 5 twelfth. And this chip and run from the rough would leave him with a tap in birdie. A level par 72 would keep him at 8 under for the tournament, still good enough to be out in the final group on Sunday on the old course. Liam Nolan from Ireland was going along steadily, here we see him from a distance, birdying the 11th to briefly move alongside Conor McKinney at 8 under par. After birdying the next, before dropping a couple of shots in the back nine, Six under would be good enough for a tie for fifth at the halfway stage. Another Australian was going well. Connor's good friend Adam Brady, also from Western Australia, with a nice birdie here at the fifth. Seven under par after 36 holes for Adam, just one shot behind the leaders. Many of the golfers would struggle in the breezy conditions, especially on the back nine, but not Rory Franson. Two impressive birdies from Rory in the closing stages of his second round. He would see that putt home for a birdie on 16. 
and up onto the very tough par 3 17th hardly giving up any shots at all on the day but no problem for Rory what a fantastic tee shot that was and he would see that birdie putt home and he would finish the day alongside Adam Brady on 7 under par his 66 was the best round of the day there was too many mistakes on his morning round on the old course though and that would see him drop out of contention fellow Scott George Burns was looking good again this year after missing out on the trophy last year in that sudden death playoff he would go into the final days 36 holes tied for the lead at 8 under par and what a final day lay in store for the golfers venues don't get any better with all the grandstands lit up by the June sunshine along with the most famous leaderboard in golf the question was who would be topping the Lynx trophy leaderboard by the early evening well George Burns put himself on the back foot straight away by finding the water with his approach at the first he very nearly saved his par but that bogey was a sign of things to come for the former Scottish amateur champion and his challenge would fade Liam Nolan would make a good start to the day here we see him in the light rough <clears throat> on the sixth hole coping with that tricky lie no problem he would birdie what would be his third birdie in four holes but he couldn't keep the good scoring going and he would end the day in a tie for 14th Adam Brady was also making a fast start in round 3 he too birdied here at 6 and was now 9 under par and in the lead Aaron Edwards Hill from Chelmsford in England was putting together an impressive display having started round 3 two shots off the lead he would hold this birdie putt here at 9 and he would also birdie the 10th after a long drive and a very tidy chip rolling up and onto the green and he too would move to 9 under par for the tournament but Adam Brady was really motoring now this was him on 9 another great approach shot and another birdie 10 under for the tournament and a high 5 from the caddy and even when he was tested just to save par he was up to the task holding out here for his 3 at the tricky 11th flying the flag for the youngsters was Lytham Trophy runner up 15 year old Connor Graham from Blair Gowrie starting the day at 4 under he would par the last for a third round 69 to start the final round at 7 under par and well in contention now you have to think at 15 he's only going to get better nobody could better the round put together by Irishman Robert Moran though his 66 was almost a 65 with his birdie putt on 18 just shaving the edge of the hole having started round 3 4 shots off the lead he was now 10 under par but as he headed down the first for the second time he could see over his shoulder the man to catch after 54 holes Adam Brady would hold that birdie putt and start the final round 2 shots clear on 12 under par out behind him in the final group Conor McKinney was now 4 shots back but he too would birdie 18 after another nice approach and close the gap to 3 and perhaps give him some optimism for round 4 on to the final round and Aaron Edwards Hill would birdie the first to move to 11 under and keep his challenge going great putt there Robert Moran was going well again though and as he played this tee shot here at 8 he too was 11 under par 
floating it in from amongst the last of the scaffolding and seating to go up out at the loop sharing the same green with the 8th is a par 4 10th where Paul Bovey had also made it to 11 under par going for his birdie wrong choice from the cameraman Bovey's putt would stay out Moran's would drop the Irishman was now 12 under par and really chasing the victory here he is on the par 4 10th 350 yards long this hole is the breeze helping a little it has to be said but still an impressive drive to roll up to the edge of the green but it was only a par here for Robert back over to the 8th tee and Conor McKinney was putting together an impressive front nine holding this putt would give him his fourth birdie of the day moving him four under for the round and 13 under for the tournament that was only one shot off the lead now which was still held by Adam Brady here on nine and he would move two shots ahead of Conor McKinney on the ninth by holding this birdie putt and giving him his second birdie here today the Lynx trophy looked like it was going to be going to an Australian for the first time since 1990 but which one? Top Scott at the end of play was Connor Graham there weren't too many birdies on 17 but Connor rolling in a nice birdie putt here on his way to finishing in a tie for 7th back down on 16 now and all of a sudden Adam Brady was about to lose his lead this was his 4th shot at the par 4 after some bunker trouble 2 putts for a double bogey and it was now advantage Conor McKinney especially after rolling in this birdie putt at 14 his 8th of the round to put him at 17 under par for the tournament Robert Moran had got to 15 under par but a bogey at 15 and a costly double bogey here at 17 would mean that he would have to settle for third place back on 16 and Conor McKinney was staying focused this a tricky putt to save par but it's hold and his four shot cushion remained intact well something spectacular was needed from Adam Brady but you can't do much better than a birdie here on 17 which he got just in the side door fantastic three there well hold and well with a birdie up the last who knows maybe he could put some pressure onto the leader he'd been a little bit bold with his approach though and it was too much to ask for Adam to hold his birdie putt as it rolled away from the hole that meant that even though Conor McKinney had bogeyed 17 he still had a two shot lead to enjoy coming up the last in front of the grandstands and the usual gallery of spectators safely through the valley of sin he left himself a simple tap in for the victory and a fantastic winning total of 16 under par as he added the Lynx trophy to the Australian amateur title he won earlier this year a thoroughly deserved victory, a great finishing total and hugs and applause all round for Conor McKinney. I struggled in the morning round, just couldn't really get anything going but finished strong with a birdie and it gave me some momentum playing this afternoon. I knew on the 18th tee it was a couple of heads so it was kind of like just knock it on the green and then I should be able to handle it from there. To win at the home of golf, well, you can't ask for much more, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Congratulations to Connor, and we look forward to seeing you all back here at the home of golf next year for the St Andrews Lynx Trophy.